to welcome God's people to Sabbath school this morning here at Community Worship Center of Seventh-day Adventists. For those of you in our audience, we a very special welcome to you. It is our hope that your week went well. Well, the fact that you are in God's house this morning is, is an evidence that it did go well. We thank the Lord for that. For those who are joining us online, we welcome you also. It's a joy to have you tuning in. We're together. We take another look at the Word of God here in our Sabbath school lesson. In, uh, this quarter, we have studied three cosmic messages as we find them in the book of Revelation. Jesus came from glory and met John on the Isle of Patmos in a little cave and gave him some messages for us. John wrote them down in the entire book of Revelation. So the Revelation is all about Jesus. And in that Book of Revelation, chapter 14. John says, I saw three angels flying in the midst of heaven. What did they have? Having the everlasting, everlasting, because there will not be another everlasting gospel be preached to the ends of the earth and it says the fact that the angels are flying swiftly around the earth is an evidence that the gospel must go quickly so that Jesus can come. Today we are studying under the caption the seal of God and the mark of the beast. The seal of God. The mark of the bees. Now remember Jim is taken from Revelation 13 verse 10 from the New King James Version. Let's say that together. He who leads into
into captivity shall go into he who kills with the sword must here is what and patience and the faith of the saints loving lord we dare not open the bible unless we talk with you it is your love letter to your children Lord, we have looked at those pages this week and somehow you have revealed yourself anew to us. Remind us now of these precious gems that we have uncovered as we review them together now for these few moments. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. We're talking about the seal of God. Ever since the war began in heaven. The devil decided that he is going to set his throne above that of God. I will exalt my throne above the Most High God. And the great conflict in heaven is about worship. God is to be worshipped. And Satan says, I am to be worshipped. And so the great conflict goes on about worship. And here we are. The Bible says the old devil was cast down to this earth because we allowed him. Adam exchanged places with him. And here we are. The great controversy is taking place in the universe, but particularly here on earth great controversy between Christ and Satan and it's all about worship 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 can I make a quick comment I mean it's, it's kind of too quick but I just want to make a comment about the topic of the lesson this morning if we notice it said the seal of God and the mark of the beast mm -hmm. if we know something about a seal a seal can be something permanent, mm -hmm. but a mark, when you think of a tattoo that someone takes on his skin or something like that, a mark is temporary. Mm -hmm. right, for some time, that mark will go into non-existence. Hallelujah. Yes. Bless the Lord. Well, let's, let's look at that right quick now. We're talking about the seal versus the mark. The seal, and we are talking about worship. God says, I am to be worshipped. Satan says, I am to be worshipped. Now we are talking about God's seal. What is the seal? Is it identified, God's seal identified anywhere? Where do we find it? All you have to do is open the Bible. Exodus chapter 20 is recorded there. The Ten Commandments of God. God's Ten Command. Written with his own finger. That's how I want you to worship me. Those who will worship me, this is how I want you to worship me. And in the midst of the Ten Commandments, we find a command which says, Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is what? The Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And why did God say we are to keep the seventh day Sabbath? Why did he say we ought to keep it? It's Pastor, right there in the commandment. So, um, Pastor, this, that commandment holds so much, mm -hmm. a whole lot. It tells who the creator of the universe is. And the moment we know who the creator is, then that tells you everything, the one who holds everything together. So if we undermine or discredit the seventh, the, the, um, the seventh day, um, it means that we are discrediting God and we are saying he's not the creator of the world. Yes, hallelujah. So we're looking for the seal of God here. 
In the midst of God's Ten Commandments is the Sabbath command which says worship God. And the command tell you why you are to keep the Sabbath holy. Why we, we keep the Sabbath holy? For in how many days? That's why this is the seal of God. And we are told that those who will worship the Lord, the seal of God will be found where? In their forehead or in your brain, in your head. It will be sealed there. Those who would keep or who would worship the true and living God. So the Sabbath command is essential to worshiping the true God. That in there is the seal of God. Now when we talk about a seal, what is this thing called a seal? A seal, a seal. Okay, let me take this one. <laughs> Uh, the seal is usually the symbol of authority. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever has symbol the symbol of authority. Mm -hmm. So, um, in the early days, the kings and so on would wear a ring. Mm -hmm. And the ring was actually the seal. So, they would dip it in the ink and stamp things. So, when the, um, remember when the prodigal son returned, the father said, put the ring on his finger. Mm. Oh, all right. So, now. that was um, to show that he's, he's now in charge. He's not a servant. All right, Sister he's Coons is touching on, on, on the nerve right there. The when prodigal you, son. When you, when, you, when you get married, a simple, I, I'm not going to call it simple, but a marriage mm -hmm. between a man and a woman, there's also a seal. That's something a seal that is in there. Yes, that's a seal. All right. I like that, that illustration, Sister Coons. The prodigal son returned home. You remember that, that uh, parable? The prodigal son returned home. The father was so glad to have him back home that he gave him a ring. And when, he, when that boy goes downtown, he doesn't have to put his hand in his pocket to take a dime. And all he has to do is just to stamp that ring on a piece of paper and walk his way. That was, now what is in that ring that make him, give him that kind of authority? In the ring was the father's what? Signature. The signature or his name was in the ring. When he stamped it down on that paper, that his name is in the ring. And that his title was in the ring. Yep, right. And that his territory was in the ring. Uh -huh. So when he strike it like that, oh, the merchant man, he knows that my money is good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get paid. Amen. And so it is with the seventh day Sabbath. In the Sabbath Hallelujah. commandment mm -hmm. is the name of God. Anybody can identify it in the seventh commandment, in the, the fourth commandment? Why should we worship the Lord? We're talking about the name of what is the name of God in there? The creator of the heaven and earth. All right. And is his, what is his authority or his territory? The heavens earth. and the earth. Heavens and the earth. And what else? The seal. The seal. So the seventh day Sabbath is the seal of the living God. And those who will worship the true and living God will have in their minds the seal of the living God. And what is that seal? The seventh day Sabbath as commanded by God himself. Now Satan says, all right, you got a seal. I want one. And now what is his, what is his seal? Sunday. God says Sabbath. Satan says, my seal is Sunday. Sunday observance. And we all know where that started out. The great Constantine, the emperor of Rome, moved from 
one part of the Roman country to another. And when he left there, he left the Pope in charge. Mm -hmm. The Pope was the boss. And then he himself became a Christian. Pope Napoleon, uh, uh, Constantine baptized himself and became a Christian. And with that Christianity, he played havoc with the few who were keeping the Sabbath. And the pastor, if you notice, in these days, you know, it, it's like an examination is coming up or it's going on right now. Because when, you, when an examination is coming up, you, you, are, you, you spend time studying. Some people cram. Mm -hmm. If you notice in the lesson, these are just a reminder of what happened in lessons before when the woman flew into the wilderness for a time. And who followed her? The, the, the other woman and the, and the horse clothed in purple. Mm -hmm. So here we have right now, all that is happening is in close, it's, it's a closing time. And the Absolutely. Sabbath, yes. Amen. Yes, We're going to get to that, my, my brother. The, 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 so we have I identified the true Sabbath with God's commandment and the other Sabbath, which is the devil's Sabbath. He says, Constantine says, you worship on Sunday. God says, worship on Sabbath. And so here we have Sunday observance, Catholicism. But the Bible prophesied long ago that something was going to happen yes, sir. to Catholicism. And was it fulfilled? Mm -hmm. yes. The day came when the Pope was taken by the French, that French general, mm -hmm. and he didn't like what the Pope was saying. Mm -hmm. And so he sent General Bertier over there to arrest the Pope, Pope Pius VI, <laughs> and put him in prison, and he died in prison. Nice. Now, who has the power to arrest the Pope? Ouch. The Pope is God's representative on earth, but you're coming here to arrest me? Mm. But he was, and he died in Versailles, in prison. And the Bible says the deadly wound mm. was struck. Mercy. Yeah, Pastor, I just want to... Um, just plug something in here. We'll talk about the Pope and, you know, we wonder how much power does this person really have? And some people don't understand the power that they have taken on to themselves. And so we're playing around with this thing. But we better get serious because they are very serious. The Pope is said to be the successor of St. Peter. That is bypassing Jesus. So if he's a successor of St. Peter, we know that because they claim that God said he was building his church upon that rock. You see, the devil has a way of using some truth and adding a little error. Mm. Now, Peter is a little rock. He's not the rock that, Jesus, that God was talking about. Jesus is the solid rock. Mm. He is that great, gigantic rock. And he said that... Um, he was going to build his church upon Peter. And so they decided that if Peter was the saint, then they are the successors. And they have taken on all of that power. Now, the Saturday and the Sunday idea, Saturday was blessed by God. And we know that once God has blessed something, he never takes back the blessing. So the blessing is on Saturday, just like the blessing is on the Jews. They're not doing the right thing, but they are still blessed, very, very blessed, and God will not take it from them. So the Saturday was blessed, and um, uh, Constantine realized how blessed Saturday was. They didn't want to lose all the money they were making, and that's why Seventh-day Adventists have to be careful. We want to work on Sabbath because on Sabbath we make more money, right? So they put Saturday aside as a work day and made Sunday the solemn day. And so the blue law came, came into existence where you could even sell alcohol on, on, on Sunday. And the devil has used this thing so much to make Sunday so, such a, a holy day that we are beginning to believe the same thing too. So, well, our God is very is careful. Out. God says, I want you to keep the seventh day Sabbath. He doesn't want anything else. Mm -hmm. Don't do God any favors and select some folks, select Thursday. 
said to me, Pastor, I could select any day and keep it holy. You can't. Because God blessed the seventh day, and that's the only day of the week that is blessed. Amen. You can't keep Sunday holy because Sunday is not blessed. You can only keep Saturday holy because Saturday is blessed. And you can keep Friday holy because it's not a blessed day. Consequently, God wants what he is commanded. And the Bible says, the seal of God will be found where in the last days? In the minds of his people. So is it in yours? Is the Sabbath in your mind? Well, praise the Lord. That's why you're here in God's house today. So recently I was speaking to someone who never heard of Seventh-day Adventists before. And when I told him we go to church on Saturday as our Sabbath, he was flabbergasted. Now, uh, there may be some people that think that 1844 when the Adventist body came together was the first time Christians started keeping Sabbath. Is that so? I'm just throwing that out to, well, the, to, as, to as Pastor was explaining earlier on, um, it was Constantine who changed everything. Um, the Sabbath worship was established from the very beginning. From the very beginning. So even though they were not called Adventists at that time, Seventh day Adventists then, we had Sabbath worshipers from the very beginning of worshiping where God established the Sabbath in the very first week. Thank you. But the the word also said that. Jesus opened the scroll mm. on the Sabbath day to read. So that was way, way, way before Constantine. So we know that the Sabbath was instituted at creation, right? And before that, God had it in his mind. Remember, God, whatever is in God's mind, whatever is to happen, has already happened in his mind. So we have to realize that there is nothing that can change what God has stamped. We can bypass it, we can circumvent it, we can do all kinds of things, but what God has set in place is in place, whatever the name we call it. All right, so that we understand this part of the lesson we are studying, it's essential that you understand this. The prophecy says the deadly wound was going to be struck, and was it fulfilled? Yes, yes. 1798. And the prophet, now God raised up this church. As a matter of fact, let me step back a little bit. The deadly wound was going to be healed and it began healing. In the 1800s, the yes. Pope started getting some more power and look at him today. Huh. Over in the Vatican City, God on earth. So the, the deadly wound was healed, right? And there we are, the power of Catholicism. We've got to be careful. The Bible says, well, of course, let's look back a little bit. Over those 1,260 years of papal power, millions of Christians lost their lives. They say, well, you do what we say or you're dead. And the Christians lost their lives. Now, here we are. Do you think that's going to happen again? As you studied this week, I hope you saw that in your lesson that it's going to happen again. It stated that in, it stated that in several parts of the lesson, that history will repeat itself. Ah, history will repeat itself. Yes. Protestantism is going to join hand with Catholicism and Catholicism and Protestantism is going to seek the help of the government to persecute this church. Are you ready for it? We're not going to sail on into the kingdom. It's going to get rough. But as the Lord helped those who were persecuted back in the early church, will he see us through also? I am sure he will. The Bible says there is going to be a falling away. When it gets rough, there is going to be a falling away from this church. Mercy. Many of us are going to leave the church. Mm -mm. Oh Lord, let it not be you. But the prophecy shows us, if you look at it carefully, I hope you saw that, this week, that there is going to be a falling away. 
Lord, let it not be me. Mercy. So a quick follow-up to my question. As was pointed out, the Sabbath was, was there from creation. And even though Constantine tried to change it, there was always Sabbath keepers throughout history. And the lesson points out the Waldenses, we know of the Hujnats, and all these different people. So I just wanted to bring out that point, that there was always people who follow Christ, who kept the Sabbath. Always who have the mark in their forehead. Okay. All right. So we're on to the falling away. Um, let us not be slack when we talk about falling away because we can be in the church and have still fallen away. Mercy. Um, we have been seeing a lot of changes in the church where um, we are coming to church, but we wonder, are we really in a Seventh-day Adventist church? Because we see a lot of things now being, you know, infused into our, um, our church. Um, for instance, the pride. We now call it the pride because, you know, we have to hide behind something. And we are encouraged to embrace this thing because everybody's different like the colors of the rainbow we are all different and we should be accepted of course we are all God's children God loves the sinner but not the sin so when we see the sin it has to be called out we are not shepherd's rods because we are not the ones to take people out of the church but we must be careful of how we embrace this thing and encourage our children to embrace it. That's just a little word um, out there. So the falling away is going to happen again. We can't get scared and say, oh, it's not going to happen and whatever. It is going to happen again. And we have to be prepared for it. We can't be lackadaisical. We can't go to sleep. We have to listen to the word. We have to read the word. And we have to practice. Now, I am not perfect. I am speaking to myself too. We need to get deeper into the word. Here it says um, that there are going to be identifying marks when, th when the last day is upon us. So we are not going to be left blind. The Lord has never left us blind. There's always somebody, something that is going to help us. So we will be able to see what is coming to us. What are some of the things? And um, I want to, um, that was Monday. I had to take a little bit of Monday because I want to jump into Tuesday. Satan's final strategy. Satan is not going to use anything new. He's going to use the same old, same old, the same things he has used before and caught people with it. He's going to use it and catch people again. To do the same thing the same way every time and expect a different result is madness. And we know that is what Satan is going to do. So, there is going to be someone who is going to take on his, um, his mandate. And if we look at the G20, I don't know how many people know about G20. The G20 is really a group of 20 countries that meet every year to sit down and make laws and, you know, do things, look at the, the way the world is for the entire world. 20 countries will sit and do that. The Pope will not be present. It will be done on September 9th to September 10th, Saturday to Sunday, two days. And they're going to be discussing world affairs and talking about how to unite things. Remember, there is strength in unity. And if we don't unite as God's people, the devil's people will unite and get things done. So they are planning to meet. There are 20 world leaders. And they meet to talk about the world affairs and so on. The Pope will not be present. But he has already called to explain to them that they must remember the, re the, the reasons they're meeting and what their, their um, responsibilities are. So even though he may not be there, his voice will be heard and his, his, his ideas will be on the table. We have to be very careful. So we come in, we're coming down to that time. And where, uh, um, yes. Sister Coombs, if mm -hmm. we, biblically we can look at it, Revelation 17 mm -hmm. and verse 12 tells us that about the ten horns, 
and the ten horns which thou sawest are kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and kings of kings, and they that are with him are called the chosen and faithful. So here we have it. Even though the nations of the world, the lesson tells us this week that the devil uses um, human as agent. And this is what is going on all. So even though these, these nations are coming together, when, um, we will have the final push when God's people will be, God's people will be persecuted and all that. We are reading that history is going to repeat itself. Matthew 24 tells us also. So it tells us that when we even see these things, we are to just look up. But Elder, we don't even have to look too far. Because um, when we think of what um, religious liberty is looking at, some of us don't read. We have to read. We were called the people of the book, but I don't know where we are today. Um, public affairs is now, uh, sorry, religious liberty is now... Um, P-A-R-L, which is um, Public Affairs Religious Liberty, because they are looking into the things that are happening to us. Just like how we watch the news, we need to tap into Northeastern Conference, General Conference, and read what's going on there. Um, Pastor Lawrence Brown, who is the Associate P-A-R-L Director, sent out a letter talking about the Supreme Court case the case that is going to be, that um, was in front of the Supreme Court, right? They, um, they were supposed to be meeting on June 10th to, to, to talk about it. They are talking about the Sabbath accommodation. They start with a little bit first, right? We're saying that the Sabbath, uh, the Sunday law will not be passed and we're hiding behind that. But we must remember that there will, they'll go little by little, tip, tip, as we say in Jamaica right? Tip, tip in the bucket until next thing you know, um, big things happen. So they're dealing with Sabbath accommodation first, right? Are people going to be able to get Sabbath off? Because if you're not to work on Sunday, then you have to work on Saturday, right? So they're calling us to come together and pray. Stop the foolishness of trying to, to, to fight our ways into to church offices. And if we don't get it, we're so upset. Um, fight for different things in the church and so on. We don't have time for fighting. In fight, we have to pull together to fight the enemy. Mm. Remember that they will come in at our weakest link. Wherever they see weakness, that's where they, they are going to come in. Another thing we need to look at, um, these people look at where there is unrest. Wherever there's a little problem, that's where they come in. That's the only way the war bank can give us money. So after 9-11, we got a lot of resources because we were afraid. We gave them our power when we allowed them to listen into our conversations now. So there are some trigger words. When you're talking on the phone, if you say certain words, people start to listen to your conversation. Because we were afraid... That's why we gave up our, um, our rights. So we have to be careful of how much rights we are giving up as Christians because, oh, we are afraid of what's happening in the world. We must be very, very careful. Um, when we, the seal will come in the head, we know that's the seat of reason, of, of, of um, where we make decisions, right? So the seal will be there on the decisions we make. So don't look for somebody to give you 666 on your forehead. It's not going to happen. It's going to be your thoughts, you, the way you reason that they're going to be working on it, doing it right now. And your hands, what you do, your deeds, your actions, that's, that, those are the things, those are where the seals are going to be. Yeah, Let us be very yeah. careful of how we think, and how we perform. That we're talking about the seal of God in your forehead or in my mind. And then also that same passage mentions something called the faith of Jesus. Anybody know what that is? The commandments in your mind and the faith of Jesus. One day he was strung out there on Calvary's cross, isn't it? You are going to have to participate in that. On the 
It's not going to be long before there's going to be a falling away from this church when the going gets rough. God help you to be faithful until Jesus comes. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, well, I should be doing Thursday, Friday. But before I do Thursday, Friday, I see that there's an important uh, day that's being uh, not focused on here. And that's the mark of the beast. And uh, we... Okay, we all think of it, as was said, as a physical mark on our forehead, but it's not. As the sister said, it's the mind. And from the mind, as we saw the, in, in, uh, in her explanation, we have the mark on, the, uh, on your forehead and also on your hand when it comes to the mark of the beast because the mind, once the, once the, the devil has control of your mind, he has control of your hand, which is your actions. She reminded me that she did cover this, so I'll move back to Thursday. Now, Thursday speaks of the Sabbath test. And it, it commences by saying that in June 6, 2012, uh, Pope Benedict, while speaking to 15,000 people, reminded them to keep Sunday holy as the day of rest and uh, rest and family. Now, uh, this speech that he gave was not the first time that the Pope wanted the world to follow Sunday as the day of worship. For we saw, as was pointed out, since uh, AD 321, when Constantine gave his decree, trying to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday, that the Roman church has been in the business of trying to get the world to follow this. And uh, we who study the Bible know that uh, that church when Constantine, the military ruler, joined it, we, that was a combination of military and religious powers coming together. And we know that if we have studied our Bible, that that is what's going to happen and has been happening all along. And when it comes to fruition, as, as Pastor Goff said, when the, the, the Protestant church joins with the Catholic church and they join the, the uh, human agencies of power, that's when persecution will really take place upon those who seek to keep God's Sabbath. That's when the Sabbath test will come into being. Now, uh, they stole my thunder when they spoke so many of the things, but I wanted to go back. I have it written here, the, my little notes about this postman who was working with the post office in Pennsylvania, delivering his packages and going to church on Sunday. And then the, the Amazon signed a contract with the post office, and now we get Amazon packages every day of the week. And this postman was forced or was being made to deliver packages on Sunday. And he says, I can't deliver packages on the Sabbath. Now, listen to that. He's saying he can't deliver packages on the Sabbath, which is Sunday in his eyes. So we see he has been deluded. And that is now going to the courts as this guy wants to keep the Sabbath on Sunday and he's not being allowed to keep the Sabbath on Sunday. So I'm watching that case because it has uh, very strong implications as to are they going to say, well, hey, Sabbath is a Sunday, leave this guy alone? Or are they going to say, well, you know, Sabbath is Saturday. We got to give folks Saturday off and we also got to give this guy his Sunday off. So I don't know how this is going to play out, but this is something that we need to take note of because it's happening right now. Ella, okay. before you move on, you touched something that I think we need to look at. Mm -hmm. This idea of rest. Mm -hmm. Sabbath is a rest, mm -hmm. right? It's a rest in, in time, but outside of time, okay. right? But when you look at Sunday, is the day of rest for them. So they call it the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. A lot of, when I was growing up, my grandmother called Sunday Sabbath too. Mm -hmm. She didn't know that um, it's only, you know, that Sabbath that we really recognize, um, Saturday that we recognize as Sabbath. So we have a lot to educate people on. Mm -hmm. Ignorance should never be lauded. If they don't know, we are supposed to tell them. Because they truly believe that Sunday is the Sabbath. And until we go out there, put on our walking shoes, go out there and tell people, they will not know. And it's going to be on our shoulders. Well, some people are sincere in their ignorance. Mm -hmm. And some people don't know. 
all right? Some people have made a choice, they know, but have made a choice. So we have those categories, but it is our job to take this gospel to the ends of the earth, to all nations, kindreds, and towns, okay? Moving right on, uh, Sabbath, uh, Thursday says that sooner or later, laws will be passed, and those who conscientiously, conscientiously follow the Lord and keep the true Sabbath will be labeled as opposing society's best, best interest. Meaning, if you want to keep the Sabbath, that's not good for business. That's the big shopping day. And so we will be persecuted. We will be persecuted just like they persecuted saints back in the days who wanted to keep the Sabbath. Okay. Now, the thing is, God knows that that is coming. He has warned us about these things. And he's going to seal those who are conscientiously seeking to keep his Sabbath. Now, as was pointed out, God's seal will be on our forehead, which is our mind. Okay. God gives us a choice. He doesn't force us. But he wants those who have been made that choice, he will seal them and protect them during this time of persecution. Okay. As was pointed out by my sister and, and uh, Pastor Goff before, a seal signifies your authority, your ownership, etc. If a king put a seal on a, on, a, on a letter and sent it to somebody, the mailman dare not open that letter <laughs> or anybody else other than the, 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 the recipient intended. Okay, as was pointed out, the seal shows uh, your authority, it shows your territory, and, and various things. Okay, now the important thing is this. Um, when I thought of the seal, I didn't think of it being placed on paper because, you know, back then they had papyrus and not so much paper. Paper came along later. But they used wax, and they had the signet ring, which the king had, as was pointed out with the prodigal son, which they would warm the wax up and place the seal into it and allow it to dry. Now, when I thought of that, I thought of the Christian uh, being so receptive to God that he can put the seal. So the wax had to be soft enough to receive that imprint. Are we soft enough to God's calling to receive his imprint on our minds? That's what came to my mind when I thought about that. Anyway, um, it also speaks here of Exodus 20, 8 to 11, which was touched on, where God says, Remember my Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any labor. Thou nor thy son, thy, thy daughter, thy manservant, and so on and so forth. Now Satan has sought to, replicate, to, to replace God's Sabbath by, by putting Sunday in his place. But God has said that there's always going to be a faithful few. And that, that bodes the question, will you and I be among those who remain faithful to God? We saw what happened to the Waldenses. If you, read your, if you read your quarterly, we saw that thousands of them were killed because they wanted to keep the Sabbath and they did not want to follow the man-made doctrines. Friends, a, a time of peril is coming. A time of tribulation is coming where saints of God will not only lose jobs, but we will have to flee to the woods and to the mountains because it will be such a terrible time that we will be killed for holding up to our beliefs. And the, I'm sorry to cut right in Go right ahead. here because, as it said, history shall repeat itself. Mm -hmm. And um, in doing my extra reading, I, I read the first four chapters of The Great Controversy actually cover most of this lesson. At page, <clears throat> page 599 it tells us that we will be, re re uh, we will be accused again mm. for those of us who will be faithful yes, because there will be no middle ground. Hello. That's what I read. This, no middle ground. Mm. Okay, well I'll read something too. In the Converse Catechism of Catholic Doctrine we read, uh, which is the Sabbath day? And this is what they say. Saturday is the Sabbath day. And further uh, to the second question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? It said, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea, AD 336, transferred the solemnity of Saturday to Sunday. So they, they admit this and they claim it's because they have the authority to do this. So when we associate ourselves with Sunday keeping, we are saying that we acknowledge their authority 
to make this change, which was uh, prophesied when the Bible said that they will seek to change laws and the times, etc. So friends, we need to be very careful. We need to be very careful in what we do and why we do these things. Uh, Elder, sorry, I have to jump in here. Um, we're looking at the mark of the beast and the mark of God, which you're still looking at, Saturday and Sunday. The mark of the beast is controlling both head and hand, mm -hmm. right? So on Sunday you're, not, uh, Sunday, you're not supposed to do anything. Mm -hmm. Just rest. Saturday, mark of God, only in the head, Forehead. Mm -hmm. right? So that's, but because he has given us freedom of choice, mm -hmm. he respects what we, we, we do. So he says that he will, you know, come into our minds and, and, you know, once we have God in our mind, we will know how to think. But it doesn't mean he's controlling what we do with our hands. So when we get to the place where we realize that we have become robots, it will be too late because it's, it's then that people will realize that they have already accepted the mark of the beast. Mm. Amen. Okay. So we won't be left in dark, in the dark. We will not be left alone to just move, carry on. We must use our heads. All right. I know time that, is against us. That is why it's so we must write it in our hearts. Write these yes, things right. in our hearts. Which our mind, as, as the mind, as far as the, the scripture tells us that. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll conclude here because we're running out of time, but it does say here, um, Sunday is an extremely important symbol, revealing the unbelievable craftiness and sophistry of the dragon. This change of God's law expresses in one simple action the very essence of the hatred of the dragon against God in the cosmic conflict. The simplicity is highly deceptive. The dragon has sought to usurp God's place in the cosmos by depicting him as the true object of worship and arguing that God's law is unjust, that it should be changed. And so he sought to change that. Amen, sir. So here we, we've studied this entire quarter and it is telling us one thing. If we are going to serve the Lord, we have got to serve him the way he wants it. Not the way they want it. It's the Lord identifies himself in his Ten Commandments. The way he wants us to worship him. In it he says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Amen. Why should you keep it holy? Because in six days I made the heavens and the earth and uh, the fountains of water. Now, what is Sunday's claim? In six days, what did the devil claim for Sunday? Sunday observance is the devil's desire to be worshipped. That's the conflict between Christ and Satan. Satan says, I am to be worshipped, my day is Sunday. God says, if you're worshiping me, I want you to do that on the Sabbath. Who are we going to obey? Mercy. By God's grace, let's be faithful. Remember, the Bible says, for those who will be saved, the Sabbath commandment will be written in your mind. Yes, it, and when it's in your mind, it's going to stay there. It's going to get rough. It's going to be a time of persecution again. Because they're going to say those Sabbath keepers are causing all this problem in the world. Let's get rid of them. But then they tried it before. And they did not succeed. Jesus is coming back for his church. In a little while he will be here again. And those who keep his commandments will be among those who will hear from him. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou in the joy of thy Lord. Amen. Are you planning to be one of those, beloved? Yes, sir. I know I am. Thank you, dear Lord, for what we have uncovered from the Bible as we studied your precious words this week. Oh, Lord, bless your children. There is errors all over the world. And Lord, as your servant, Dr. Coombs, point out, we must teach men and women 
that the coming of the Lord requires obedience to his command. Bless us now and keep your children faithful. Save us when it is yours to come. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. What a joy it is to study the word of God. We invite you to be back with us next Sabbath. We're going to be up there at the campgrounds, but there will also be service right here. So come on back, same time, next week, where we will study again the word of God. Yeah, Johnny, man. Everything okay? Everything's been good. I've just been in deep thought lately because, you know, a lot of things are changing. I'm just trying to step into the plate in, like, a lot of aspects. I'm not just trying to be complacent in that oh, sense. Really? Complacent about what? So, as you know, I'm a taken man, mm. but I, I, I have a child and I'm... Oh, wow, wow, man. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm going to be a father, but I, I don't know what a uh, father is supposed to be or what it is. Well, from my experience, a father is someone who's a leader and not a follower. A father is a lover of his wife and a role mother for his children. Someone that wakes up and does what he has to do for his family. He provides, he loves one another, and he's a leader in his home. How else can he lead the church of God if he does not do those things? Right. A father corrects their child. A father wouldn't give a snake to a child if he asked for it, would he? No, he wouldn't. The father knows how to rule his own house. He's a spiritual leader in his home. A father is a spiritual head and always in the service of God. That is the summation of what being a father is. Just like our Heavenly Father. What are y'all talking about? What it means to be a father. You can help with that. A father is wise and acts on love and not feelings. Exactly. Wow, am I the only one that doesn't know what it means to be a father? Don't look at it like that. You know, I know nowadays it's hard to decipher between a good father and a bad father, but this is why we have God to, to look for in an example. Well said. A father is also humble, patient, and supportive. Wow. I just pray that my kids are proud of me and that I make God proud as well. You will. This is why we have God to look to as an example. Well, Johnny, she's telling the truth right now. That's why my new motto is look to the father to be a good father. Father's Day is a special occasion that comes only once a year. Whether you have a biological father or even your father in heaven, it is an important occasion. Father figures can serve very important roles in our lives, whether that be through guidance, support or stability. They help to celebrate our successes and to support us through our failures. Speaking of stability, my father has honestly put me on his shoulders and helped me achieve my goals. Similarly, my dad has helped me countless nights with academic struggles and just always making sure to provide immense encouragement. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers at CWC. Whether it be in person or online, we hope that you enjoy your day. Happy Father's Day.
this is a personal prayer that I share with you. That God will bless you and that you would trust Him in all His ways. When I am weak, you carry every burden. When I am alone, you're just a breath away. When I You're the one who stills me, and when I fail, you'll always be the same. In you alone, I'm lifted up to heaven. In you alone, my soul on borrowed wings. When I reach the In you alone, I find all that I need. When you are lost, He'll rescue you from danger. And when you fall, He'll pick you up again. When you resist, He'll love past your and though we stray, he's faithful to the end. In God alone, we're lifted up to heaven. In God alone, we'll soar on borrowed wings. When we reach the end, he is just the beginning. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the cloud of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Give her of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, far in meadow, flashing sea, chanting birds and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Father, cry 
Good morning and welcome to CWC. My name is Naya. Thank you for joining us in the worship today. We want to take the time to welcome our first time guests and our returning CWC family members. If it's your first time worshiping with us, let us know in the chat below. Even though you're worshiping online, you will still be able to experience the love and support of our virtual CWC family. The Bible says, for where two or three are gathered together in his name, there I am in the midst of them. Now, let's join the service that's already in progress. unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Oh come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. The church is now called to worship.
Almighty God, as we stand in awe of your goodness and mercy today, we invite you to be present amongst us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, we declare that we love you. Thank you that you have made the way of love known through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, CWC. It's my privilege this morning to welcome you all to church today. On behalf of Pastor, Pastor Jason Ridley and family, and the officers of this church, I want to welcome you to church today. And today is a special day. We are celebrating fathers. So I'm going to ask fathers to please stand so we can see you, recognize you the right way. Fathers, amen. You look beautiful out there. Now, may the Lord bless and keep you. We see another year. It came around full circle to another year. So we want to welcome you today. We want to ask God's blessing upon you. So the members that are close to the fathers, please give them a welcome, a congratulations. Members. Amen. That looks so good. Yes. May God bless and keep you, fathers. And now I want to welcome those that are visiting with us today. Fathers or regular members or regular visitors. I would like to see who you are so that we can also give you a hearty welcome. So visitors, would you please stand so we could see who you are. Amen. Amen. So our members that are close to the visitors... Give them a hug, give them a handshake, make this be a relationship from now on. Amen. And thank God for what he has done for us during this week. I have a poem I'm going to read to you. And this is coming from a friend of mine. She passed away a month ago. And her name was Glenda. And she says, happiness is. Happiness is love in bloom. A sunny sky, a cozy room. Happiness is friends and loved ones. Summer skies and warm spring days. Happiness is a young child's laughter. Tiny hands and running feet hastening to meet his father. Coming up the even streets. Happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Psalms 145.15 May the Lord bless and keep us all as we continue our worship today. E, these are the announcements for today. The Sarah School Department would like to thank everyone who attended the picnic last Sunday. It was a success and it would not have been the same without you. Thank you for attending. The Couples Ministry will be having their annual games night tonight at 8 30 p.m in the fellowship hall downstairs all couples are invited please see sister natalie or brother kevin for additional information 
CWC International Day is July 8th. Please save the date. This means members should be collaborating with each other to represent your country. This is a very exciting time for us here at CWC as we celebrate our uniqueness and diversity of God's greatness. Please see Sister Mervis or any member of the recreational team for more information. Have a blessed Sabbath. Oh, we hopelessly lost our way. 
Union soldiers marching as to war. That's number 612, Onward Christian Soldiers.
may be seated in the presence of the Lord at this time. Song says, with the cross of Jesus going on before. How many are thankful for the cross of Jesus? The sacrifice of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's prayer time. There's so much that we are in need of prayer for on this day. But I do want to just call out a few names. We want to remember Sister Hart. We've been praying for her for a while. We want to continue to lift her up in our prayers today. We want to remember Brother Dennis. I don't know if he's here at the moment. He'll still be on his way, but Brother Dennis, uh, as we're celebrating this Father's Day weekend, his father passed away uh, about a month ago. I just received the news on yesterday, and the funeral will actually be on tomorrow, on Father's Day. And so we want to remember uh, Brother Dennis in our prayers and then we, as we heard the news on last Sabbath, we want to continue to keep the Morris family in our prayers. And uh, their daughter's funeral will be on July 6th uh, in Kingston. And so we want to remember to keep them in our prayers. Is that all right today, brothers and sisters? We still believe in the power of prayer that we serve a God who hears and answers the prayers of his children. Amen? Amen. And on this Father's Day Sabbath, there are two things we want to do at this moment. I first want to invite uh, one of our elders to come and to bring our prayer, uh, our prayer, uh, prayer box. And I want to invite those who have their My Seven for Heaven uh, cards. I want to invite you to come and bring your card and place it in our prayer box at this time. And I also at this time want to invite, we want to say a special prayer for our fathers, for all of the fathers here today. And so I want to invite all of the fathers, if you would come down to the altar at this time, uh, even if your children are grown, you're still a father, we want to invite you to come down and we want to pray a special prayer over all of our fathers today. And we want to invite, if your children are here, if you want to come stand with your father, we invite you to come down as well. As our fathers make their way down. Spouses, if you want to make your way to stand with your husband or the father of your children, we invite you to come down as well. And then if there are any others who just want to press closer, we invite you to make your way to the altar as well as our praise team sing men come on men let's 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 get a little closer together to make some space for those who else who may want to come down thank you you if you're near someone just grab the hand of the person beside you as we go to God our prayer father in the name of Jesus we thank you on this Sabbath 
for the hymn that reminds us that no matter how troubling the road sometimes seems ahead of us yet we're thankful for the reminder that the cross always goes on before us we thank you God for the power of your cross we thank you God for the victory that was won for each and every one of us at the cross we thank you God that it was at the cross where we first saw the light we thank you God that on this day that you are still willing God to keep us near the cross and so father right now we're asking as we come to the altar that you would move right now that you would move in all of our lives we pray a special prayer God for sister Hart who's still in the hospital God who's being moved uh, uh, at this time but we God are still praying and asking for your healing power we know that you are the great bomb in Gilead that you are the great physician and that there is nothing too hard for you so God we're asking even now we're interceding God that you would move upon her situation that you would bring health good health back into her life father we pray right now for uh, brother Dennis God who on this Father's Day weekend God is mourning the loss of his father who have to bury his father and so God we're asking for comfort and strength and for peace for him and his family God if there are other siblings there who are mourning this loss as well God we pray for comfort and strength for the family we pray for our very own elder Morris God as they are preparing to make the journey back to their home country God to bury uh, his youngest child his daughter we pray God for comfort for him and his wife for their children for all those God who are hurting the loss we pray for comfort and strength for the family father right now we pray for those as we have come to this Father's Day weekend we pray for those God who are like brother Dennis it may not have happened recent but since last Father's Day they have lost their father we pray for those who are coming up on the very first Father's Day without their father being with them God has the pain and hurt resurfaces for the loss we pray for comfort we pray for peace that's a passive all understanding we pray for the hope God the reminder that the dead in Christ will live again and then father as we come on this day celebrating fathers God we remember those among us who may have been like me who may have not grown up with your father and there may be those who are hurting on this day because they don't have the relationship that they wish they had with their father or may not have known who their father is we pray God that you would remember the children who are hurting on this day that you would bring comfort and peace to them but father we're thankful for the fathers who we have here today we're thankful for the men, God, young and old, who have come down to the altar, who are fathers. And Father, I pray right now that you will continue to put a hedge of protection around these men. I pray for their physical health. I pray for their mental health. I pray for their emotional health. I pray for their social health. I pray for their financial health. I pray, God, most importantly, for their spiritual health. I pray, God, that you would put a hedge of protection around them. Block them from the snares of the enemy, God, that wants to destroy their lives. I pray, God, for their relationships with their wives. I pray, God, for the relationship of those who are not married but co-parent with a mother. I pray, God, for their relationships as they co-parent together. That their relationships will be healthy and holistic for the betterment of their children. I pray, God, that you would give them strength, God, to keep uh, their hand uh, on the plow and to keep their feet marching uh, up uh, the king's highway. 
Father, I pray, God, that you would bless these men's employment. I pray for success on their jobs. I pray, God, that you would help them to continue to be the leaders and the men that they need to be in society, God, and in their families. I pray even now, God, uh, for the Father here today, God, and for the Father tuning in right now, God, if, if there's some, God, who, who don't have the great relationship that they wish they had with their children, I pray, God, for restoration right now uh, for relationships between fathers and children. Father, may our men here, may their relationships with their children model, God, the relationship, Father, that you have with us. We thank you, God, for our men. And Father, we pray even now for those men, God, those husbands, God, who may desire to be a father and whatever challenges or issues they may have God we pray for healing we pray for deliverance God we pray for a blessing of their seed God so that father that they too God can experience the joys of fatherhood and father we pray even now for those souls God are my seven for heaven Father, as we know and we watch the signs of the time, God, we believe. We don't know the day or the hour, but we believe it's drawing nigh. So, Father, we pray for a blessing and outpouring of your spirit on all of the names that have been placed in our prayer box. We pray, God, that some of these souls this summer, God, uh, will make their calling and election sure when the call is made during our summer evangelism series. We pray, God, that even now that you would help us to be a good example to all those, God, that we're seeking salvation for the kingdom. And my prayer, God, is that every single member here in this church, God, would put in their seven names for heaven. And may each of us, God, see miracles happen amongst our family, amongst our friends, amongst our classmates, amongst our co-workers of seeing the hand of the Lord bring about deliverance and salvation into the lives of those who we are praying for. And Father, we claim these victories right now in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son and our beloved Savior. We claim it in his name. Let every lover of the risen Christ say amen. Amen and amen.
this time as we uh, continue in our service. I'm going to ask Sister Baker to come forward. And there are several men that we want to honor uh, at this time. And happy Father's Day to all the farmers, our Lord fathers. On behalf of Senator James Saunders, I would like to I would like to present to you to the, to the following fathers these these certificates, and it reads thus: Senator James Saunders Jr. Certificate of Recognition presented, wherever, in honor of your outstanding dedicated fathers from the Community Worship Center of Seventh-day Adventist Church. Signed, Senator James Saunders, New York State Senator, 10th District. So as I call your names, could you please come forward? And the first one is Pastor Vincent Broxley Goff. And the next one is Deacon John Sampson. If he's not here, can, can his son come and accept? And the next person is Elder Deacon Matthew. Matthew Smith. Matthew Smith. And the next person is Elder Kenneth Morris. And do you know who the next person is? None other than our wonderful pastor, Jason Ridley. Each of these men uh, just represent uh, an example of what a good man should be, a good Christian man should be. And uh, these men, uh, Pastor Goff and his leadership that he brings to the church. <laughs> Brother Morris, Elder Morris. In the energy and joy, vitality that he brings to the church. Uh, I tell, I tell DeMorris all the time, man, you got to let me know when you're not going to be here now. I got to preach a little harder that day. <laughs> and then, uh, and just to uh, Elder Deacon uh, Smith and Brother John. Samson, two men, uh, brothers and sisters who are here many times, multiple days a week, caring for this building, taking care of the house of God, brother John, you know, driving from New Jersey, dealing with the traffic because of their love and dedication to this church. To the work of service and so we thank each of you for all that you do sometimes it may go unnoticed but we want you to know that we notice all of you and we're thankful for everything you do and we just wanted to be able to honor and celebrate you uh, on this sabbath day let's give our hands together put our hands together for these four wonderful men thank you this time as well we're going to invite Sister Natalie Williams and whoever else is a part of the team who's coming at this time to make a special presentation to our fathers. And 
Amen. Let's move very quickly. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Sister Natalie. Happy Sabbath, church. Uh, with all our fathers, please stand. Our fathers. Amen. Amen. Turn around, church, and see these handsome gentlemen in the midst of our ladies today. And give them a round of applause. At this time, we have some tokens that we will be giving our fathers today. So please keep standing. We would like all of you to know that you are special in our lives today. And welcome. Thank you for coming and have a pleasant Sabbath. Thank you. Men remain standing until you, you receive your gift. Please remain standing. And men, we want you to know this is just the beginning because there is a special meal prepared for you today. Amen. And men, the ladies have instructed me to announce to you that when you come downstairs for lunch, they want you to wait at the door because they're going to escort you to your seat today. Amen? And they have a spe special meal, and we're going to have an awesome time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. At this time, we will continue in worship as outlined. The Old Testament reading comes to us from the book of Psalms, chapter 1, and I will read in your hearing verses 1 to 6. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Amen. Our New Testament scripture is taken from John 6, verses 41 to 46, and I will read in your hearing. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. 
Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Amen. May God add a rich blessing to the hearing and doing of his word. Amen. Say amen for the word of God again. Amen. Before uh, Elder Shaw lifts the tithe and offering, I do want to just uh, say a word of thanks. As you know, we have been, for the last several months, goal has been to raise $150,000. Amen. Amen. For some work that we need to, structural issues, things that we need to uh, rectify here in God's house. Amen. Amen. And we're hoping to begin some work uh, after camp meeting. Uh, but I do want to just say a word of thanks, uh, brothers and sisters, because uh, we are getting close to having raised $100,000. Somebody say amen. Come on, put your hands together. We thank you to all those who have given. We thank you to those who have given uh, online to our audience that uh, tunes in from various parts around the world each week. And you may not have ever physically stepped foot in this building, but yet you support uh, this church and our ministry here. We thank you for your giving as well. And I do want to encourage those who have made pledges, but you have not given as of yet. We know that we said we were trying to reach our goal by June. We did not meet that date, but that's all right. There's still time. Amen. Amen. And I want to encourage you to fulfill the promise, the pledge that you made uh, to, to the church here. And I want to encourage those who have not made a pledge who, who have not given yet. Uh, there's still time for you as well. All we're asking is that uh, on one of the blank lines in, on the envelope under local church offering, you would just write special church project and you would give your donation and every little bit helps. How many of you believe that? Amen. Every little bit helps. A lot helps as well. Amen. So whatever you're able to give, whether it's a little or a lot, God's going to bless it. He's going to bless you and we'll be able to take care of the things that we need to take care of here. Amen. So again, we thank you. And uh, we thank you for how you have given, and we thank you for those who have not given yet, but God is impressing your heart to give and support. We thank you, our online audience. We thank you uh, as well. We thank you for your support of our church. God bless. It is this time in our worship service that we all can participate. It is when we return our tithes and offering. May the deaconess come forth to receive the tithes and offerings. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, he heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We can all praise God. We can praise God in our time in our talents, and in our treasury. It is at this point in time that we are going to praise God in our treasury. And we must not give grudgingly, but we should give of hearts of love, hearts of gratitude, because God has done great things for us. May we experience God's love and in return show that love back to him there are multiple ways that you can return your tithes and offering as on the screen in online giving at cwcsda.org giving follow the prompts and give generously then if that fails you can also sell your funds to CWCSDA treasurer at gmail.com. By so doing, indicate where your money will go. You can also do that through the mail. It might be slow, but it will get here. You can mail your funds to Community Worship Center, 
P.O. Box 340870, Jamaica, New York, 11434. And last but not least, if you are unable to do any of the above, you can make a phone call. You can call the church at 718-276-6131. The treasury staff, the deacon and deaconess, and the pastor himself can receive your tithes and offering. Remember, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith said the Lord of hosts if I will not open up to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there may not be room enough to receive let us pray father God we thank you for your love that you have bestowed upon us in giving us numerous ways in which you have blessed us and now as we come to return our tithes and offering, may you bless it, may it go forth to serve the purpose which you have in store for it, and may we all receive the blessing. In Jesus' name with thanksgiving, amen. Um 
amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me oh i once was lost but now your treasures in jars of clay so take this heart lord i'll be your vessel the world to see your love in me yeah. amazing grace how sweet Praise the Lord, CWC. Y'all are so happy to be in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord, CWC. Anybody grateful to be here? Many didn't make it, but we are here. So I ask you to come and sing with us. It's a familiar song that just says, God is the joy and the strength of my life. Anybody believe that in here? If you believe that, I invite you to clap your hands like this. Yeah. The joy and 
So I say hallelujah My response is Hallelujah You're my redeemer Hallelujah Oh, you
How many of you know God rescued your life? If you know that God really rescued your life, you can do better than that. If you know it was God who delivered you, if it was God who saved you, God who healed you, God who rescued your life, you ought to say hallelujah in this place. We thank the praise team for just the beautiful songs of worship. Our very own young people. Uh, just Alana. Uh, blessed us with the, such a beautiful song. It's my understanding who graduated on yesterday. Somebody say amen. Amen. And then our young elder, Elder Christoph, and our young deaconess, Jordan, blessed us in song. And just to our musicians, come on, you know, we take them for granted, but can we? It's a blessing to have skillful musicians, so can we do better than that? Just put our hands together for our musicians who play week after week. We thank you. Thank all of you and just to all those our elders, deacons, and media team, our ushers, deaconess, floor managers, everyone who plays a part to making our service special. We thank all of you today, those who have prepared uh, the meal. Hallelujah. Amen. We're looking forward to that. And uh, we just praise God in this place. Amen? Amen. I do want to acknowledge it's been brought to my attention. I was told that uh, a great family that used to be members here at this church who had moved away a few years ago there, here in the place worshiping with us today. We want to acknowledge them. The Neves, is there a Neves family here? We want you to just stand so everyone can see there, see you, wherever you are, the Knees family, if you could just stand. Come on, everyone. Amen. They're there toward the back, acknowledging the Knees family who's here with us, worshiping with us today. Welcome back home. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, before we get to the word, there are just a couple things I need to update you on. Uh, and so today, um, I want everyone to know the importance. And if you can put the flyer for the rally on the screen, there is a rally today at 6 p.m. What time did I say? 6 p.m. So before, brothers and sisters, you come back couples for the couples game night, we first want you to come to the rally today. At what time? 6 p.m., brothers and sisters, this is our rally as we're gearing up for our evangelistic series uh, this summer in the parking lot of the Queensboro Temple, uh, July the 22nd through August the 19th. Our rally today is at 6 p.m. at Victory, former the former Village Fellowship Church, is at the Victory Fellowship uh, Church at Victory. Um, and we want you to join us today, brothers and sisters. It's very important. Uh, all of our churches are going to be represented. We're doing, we're having a parade of churches today. Amen. And we want to make sure that our church is represented in full for this parade of churches. There's going to be a lot of pertinent information that's giving out today. And so brothers and sisters, we need you to be there for 6 p.m. this afternoon. All of those who are interested in being a part of the parade uh, of churches, I want you to see me immediately at the conclusion of service right here down on the front row, the first and second row, so I can give you just further instructions. It's not a lot that you'll need to do, but we want to make sure that we have at least 10 to 12 people representing our congregation during the parade of churches. Amen? Amen. I'll also need, and many of you have filled it out, but I'm going to ask, uh, there's still time, but brothers and sisters, the volunteer form is at the podium when you come in uh, in the morning. Uh, so please, if you could fill this out today, but this is 
the volunteer form for those who are interested in serving and working during our evangelistic meeting. We need those who are working with registration, prayer counselors, ushers, tent setup and management, volunteer Bible workers, interest coordinators. We need stage construction, seating, hospitality, and culinary services, painting, landscaping. Whatever you can think of, we need it. Amen? And brothers and sisters, we're asking. Several of you have already filled it out, but if you could fill it out today, because I want to be able to turn this information in today, and those who are leading out in the different areas will contact you as we're preparing for our upcoming evangelistic series. How many of you believe and know that God is going to do something miraculous here in Queens? Amen? Amen, brothers and sisters. So we need, we need your help in that area. Again, the form can be found at the welcome desk, at the welcome podium out front. Brothers and sisters, as you know, we're coming up upon camp meeting. Amen. For Northeastern Conference, we're excited for our camp meeting, which is going to begin on next Sabbath. So I want to give you just some instructions about uh, camp meeting. Uh, we're having a 10-day camp meeting this year. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so camp meeting will begin on next Sabbath at the campground. At our campground, um, we will have service. Church will be having service here. So for those who do not make their way to the campground, our church will be open. We will be having regular service here on next Sabbath. There's only one change, and that is we won't be serving lunch on next Sabbath. So if you come and you want to stay for the afternoon, you'll need to bring, pack and bring your own lunch. Amen? That's for next Sabbath. Now, beginning on next Sunday, that's June 25th, the week of camp meeting from June, that Sunday to Friday, the nightly services will be held here at Community Worship Center. So we will be hosting the week of camp meeting. Somebody say amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, we hope that you'll come out and support. Uh, we are the host. When people come to your home, you want to be there to support. Amen? So we need you guys to come and support. We, we, we need you to come and support. We need you to bring your friendly smile and faces. Amen? And what we don't want you to do is be possessive of seats. Uh, Y'all with me? So I know some of you got your regular seats that you like to sit in every week. There may be people from all over coming on that day. Brothers and sisters, work with us and find an available seat. Amen? And smile. Amen? Amen. So that'll be the week. Service will start. There will be a workshop for everyone beginning at 6.30 p.m. What time did I say? And then the divine service will begin at 7.15 p.m. It will be streaming on the Northeastern Conference platform, but we're encouraging as many as possible to come out during that week. Amen? And then the following Sabbath, which is July 1st, the service camp meeting will be back again at the campground. Are you with me? And on that second Sabbath for camp meeting, the doors of our church will be open, but we will be streaming the camp meeting service. So you're more than welcome to come, as we did on last year, to worship and fellowship with your other brothers and sisters in Christ for those who are not traveling uh, but we'll be streaming the actual camp meeting service. Amen? And also on that Sabbath, there'll be no lunch provided. You'll need to bring your own lunch. But also on that second Sabbath for camp meeting, we are chartering a bus to camp meeting for our seniors, first and foremost. Um, but then any others who, if there are any other seats that are available, you're more than welcome uh, to ride the bus is first come first serve so please see uh, elder hamilton sister jack um, they are putting together the list for those who want to uh, ride the bus to camp meeting for the second sabbath again i specify i want to specify that it's for our seniors first our faithful seniors 
But then any other remaining seats will come for any members who would like to go and ride up to the campground on that day. The bus will be leaving on the second Sabbath at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen? What time did I say? 6.30 a.m. So you, this is, you make, if so you're making a commitment that you really want to go knowing, if you sign up knowing that that is what time the bus is going to leave. Amen? That way, many of our members have asked to leave a little earlier this year because they want to be able to be a part of Sabbath school for camp meeting on the second Sabbath. So our bus will leave at 6.30 a.m. What time did I say? 6.30 a.m. And then the last thing, brothers and sisters, and now, first, you can put it uh, on the screen now about the prayer partners. Brothers and sisters, week after week, we've asked you to bring your my seven names for heaven, my seven for heaven. But brothers and sisters, as we're praying over these names, we're also planning a seven-day fast. A seven-day what? A seven-day fast. And so because of time, I'm not going to go over everything. We'll go over everything. Um, we'll go over other parts as we get closer. But I want to just go over, if you could put over the recommended fast schedule. Brothers and sisters, you can screenshot it. We also have this document. It's at the welcome podium uh, out front. So please take a copy when you leave. But our fast schedule, recommended fast schedule for the week, beginning July the 9th. What day did I say? We're going to fast from July 9th through the 15th, beginning at 6 a.m. on July 9th. Uh, one week before our evangelistic meeting begins, our recommended fast schedule. For Sundays, we're fasting from credit cards. Don't spend any money on your credit cards. Amen? You don't, have, you don't need it. Amen? Monday, we're fasting from soda, juice, and tea. We want to just drink water on Monday. Just water on Monday. Amen? Tuesday, social media or television. Brothers and sisters, whichever one you do the most, that's the one we want you to fast from on that day. Amen? On Wednesday, we're fasting from sweets. From what? From sweets. We're going to put down that sweet tooth for a day. Amen? On Thursday, it's social media or television again. Then on Friday, we're, we're fasting from flesh. No meat eating on that Friday. Amen. For those who don't eat meat already, we want you to just choose something else. Remember, this is a recommended fast schedule. Something else that you may partake in a lot. And then on that Sabbath, we want everyone to, we're fasting. We're only going to eat one meal. Now, you can choose what meal that is for you. But we want to fast and eat, only eat one meal on that Sabbath day. Amen. Amen. This is our recommended fast schedule. We'll go over what we'll be praying for uh, on that day, on, over that time, as well as our membership responsibilities during that time. But one of the things that we need you to do, and we want you to begin uh, looking and searching now, is we want each person during that seven-day fast to have a prayer partner. The reason we want you to turn in your My Seven for Heaven, we're going to turn these names in uh, for to the Bible workers for the evangelistic uh, meeting that's coming up. But we also want you to exchange your seven names with your prayer partner so that you guys can pray together throughout the week. Amen. Each day during that week, we want you to spend some time with your prayer partner praying over each other's seven names. Can you do that? Amen. So over these next couple of weeks, brothers and sisters, we need you to identify and make contact with your prayer partner. And we're believing God's going to do something mighty. Amen. Come on, brother says we can do better than that. How many believe in God is going to do something mighty? We're believing God is going to reach our loved one. We want the lost to be saved, but we especially want those lost loved ones of ours to be saved. Amen? So, brothers and sisters, let's go to work as we're preparing uh, for this time of harvest. Let's stand as we go to the word of God now, to the book of 2 Timothy. What book did I say? chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 and then i'll read second timothy chapter 4 verse 7 and 8 uh brother smith if i can get the uh, the fan on this fan i need a little air up here second timothy chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 
2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. When you have it, say amen. The word of God says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord at this time as we consider for the next few moments, man on fire. Man on fire. Let's pray. Father, speak to our hearts now. Use me as an anointed manservant. Speak words of life in this show sanctuary. It's my prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On this Father's Day Sabbath, I want to speak this word not just to fathers, but to all of our men. Man on fire. And if I don't get this fan on soon, I'm going to be on fire up here. So let's work on that, brethren. Man on fire. Loyalty. Duty. Respect. Selfless service. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Honor. Integrity. And personal courage. Some of you know, may know what I've just shared. What I just shared with you is the code or core values of the U.S. Army. Soldiers learn these values in detail during basic combat training. And from then on, the goal is to live them every day in everything they do. Whether they are on the job or off. In short, the seven core values of the army are what being a soldier is all about. The army believes that these seven core values prepares them for being ready even in times of battle. Well, just like the U.S. Army, we too belong to an army. How many of you know that we belong to an army? God's army and we too have a code, a set of core values that are essential for life that are to be lived daily in everything we do, whether on the job or off. When following these core values, uh, when followed, these core values help us become good Christian men, men who are on fire for God. Men who Ellen White declares in the book of education, uh, the greatest want uh, of the world is the want of men, uh, men who will not be bought or sold, uh, men who in their inmost souls uh, are true and honest, uh, men who do not fear to call sin by its right name, uh, men whose conscience uh, is as true to duty uh, as the needle to the pole uh, men who will stand uh, for the right uh, though the heavens fall Amen. we're talking about men who are on fire men who are soldiers in God's army who follow the code who follow these five core values. Men, you might want to write this down, brothers and sisters. Matter of fact, everybody, you might want to write these down. Five core values. Talking about being men on fire. 
follow the code. These men are first men who are followers. Men who are what? Followers. The Bible says, then therefore endure hardships as a good soldier. As a what? A good soldier of Jesus Christ. Paul says, be a good soldier of Jesus Christ, which implies the fact that this is God's army and he is ultimately the one in control. Now, to be a follower or soldier in this army, a man on fire requires three things. It implies relationship, rank, and rule. The relationship revolves around the fact that no one can be a soldier for the Lord until they first join the army. And the only way this is accomplished is by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Now the rank implies the fact that we acknowledge and understand that there is and will always be someone higher than you and me. Just like when a civilian joins the army of the United States uh, and they begin as a private uh, and there is a commanding officer uh, that is over them, uh, it is no different than in God's army. Uh, as a matter of fact, the text says, uh, uh, be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Uh, he is the commanding officer. We belong to him and it also implies rule in other words because this is God's army we have the obligation to obey his orders even unto death uh, because this is his army and if we are going to be a good soldier a man on fire then we must be men who are followers this is why Jesus said to his disciples, if you're going to follow me, you must first deny yourself and take up your cross and then follow me. In other words, it's not about my will or your will, but thy will be done. Now let's examine this following closer. You see, brothers and sisters, now this ability of being a man come on men I need you to hear this now now this ability of being a man who's willing to be a follower which is a necessity if we're going to be in this army and if we're going to be a man on fire, yet it is one of the contributing factors to why when you show up at any given church across this country or maybe even in the world on any given Sabbath or Sunday and you look around and see a congregation that is 70 to 80 percent women. And we are wondering, uh, we are left wondering, where are all of the men? You see, one of the very challenges for men uh, is the prerequisite of being a follower. You see, most men, if we are honest, like to be in control. Uh, as men, we believe we're fixers. It's in our DNA to try and do things ourselves and in reality, we don't always like asking for help. Sometimes even asking for help is a sign of weakness. Well, we'll struggle all day trying to put a DIY table or desk together that's do it yourself, but refuse to ask for help. And most of the time, we won't even use the directions that come along with it because we think we can do it ourselves. And society plays a part in this as well. Uh, you see, society labels people into two classes. Uh, those who are leaders 
and those who are followers and those who are classified as leaders are labeled as stronger and independent. Whereas the followers are oftentimes frowned upon as a person who is weak and vulnerable and no man wants to be labeled or viewed as a weak man as someone who's vulnerable. But understand today that God has not called us as men to be weak or followers of the world, but only to be followers of Christ. And understand today, there is nothing weak as a man about submitting to a higher power. As a matter of fact, it's a true sign of strength. This is why Jesus didn't consider it too much to submit himself to the Father by lowering himself to become a man, to lay aside his divinity, to lay aside his power and come down to this earth and die a death he did not deserve. And this is why he's exalted today and there is no name in heaven above his name and one day at the sound of his name every knee will bow and tongue confess that he is Lord and this is all because in his willingness to follow he showed his true strength and this is what we have to teach men teach our boys this is what we have to teach them our boys who will grow up to be men that if we are ever going to break this cycle in the church then that means that our men must understand that following Jesus submitting to Jesus is not a sign of weakness but a sign of a man who's a man on fire a good soldier in God's army me. talking about the code brothers and sisters but not only are they men who are followers but then secondly brothers and sisters they're men who are faithful men who are what there are three areas that are essential that we find in our text which are areas where we must be faithful if we're going to be a good soldier, a man on fire in God's army. First, we must be faithful in our patience. The text says in verse 3, endure hardship as a good soldier. That word endure means to persevere. Men who are good soldiers realize that there will be trouble along the way, but we are not detoured by it. We understand that pain uh, is oftentimes a part uh, of the Christian experience uh, because the Bible says uh, in this world uh, ye have uh, tribulation. Uh, but it also says, but be of good cheer for I, uh, talking about Jesus, have overcome the world. That's why as a good soldier, as men on fire, we must be faithful in patience because we recognize that in spite of it all, in spite of the ups and downs, in spite of the battles, in spite of the scars, in spite of the setbacks, in spite of all of the challenges, yet through it all, in the end, we win. But it takes patience. Isaiah said it best, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. But we must also seek to be faithful in our priorities. In other words, we must seek to please our commander. Verse 4 says, no man that warreth entangleth himself. In other words, uh, becomes involved uh, with the affairs of this life uh, that he may please him uh, who have chosen him uh, to be a soldier. Notice, brothers, that God has chosen us. 
that God has chosen you to be soldiers, to be men on fire in his army. And the good soldier who is faithful in his priorities has no higher goal in life than pleasing his superior and he does not allow himself to get caught up in secular affairs. Now Paul, understand, was a tent maker by trade and he continued to work after his ministry began. So in other words, he's not saying that as a good soldier in God's army, you can't be involved in any kind of occupation outside of the church. But what he is saying is that whatever we do should not be our central focus and should not take top priority over God's affairs and the things that he has designed for us. In other words, if all we do men is work a nine to five throughout the week, come home and get ready for the next day and then go to church sometimes and that's it week after week, then we are not being faithful in our priorities because we are, we were not placed on this earth just to make ends meet, but he expects us to be involved in his affairs. What does that look like? Men, be involved in church. Be involved in ministry. Be faithful to your wife, uh, to your family. Uh, Be in your children's life. Uh, Too many of our beautiful uh, black children uh, are growing up uh, without a father. Uh, Be faithful in your giving. Uh, Make an impact in your community. But then third, as a man on fire, we must be faithful in our practice. In other words, as a good soldier, men, we must be determined to do a good job and refuse to do anything that will bring disgrace and dishonor upon our superior, our Lord. In other words, we must practice what we preach. We can't just talk about it, but we must be about it. This army is for the committed. Men who are living a righteous life. Men who, if they do by chance, happen to stumble along this journey, yet they know how to get back up, dust themselves off, and keep pressing forward and not turn back. We must be men who are faithful in our practice. Many parents have told their children, do as I say, not as I do, but that does not work here. God expects us to not only say what's right, but more importantly, live and do what's right. Talking about the cold, brothers and sisters. But then men, thirdly, we must be men who are familiar. Listen, there are certain things that a good soldier, a man on fire, automatically knows. He's familiar with. You see, we must be familiar with the sound of our commander's voice. Jesus says in John chapter 10 that his sheep know his voice and they follow him. So in other words, a prerequisite for following God is that we must know his voice. And the only way to do that is to spend more time listening to it. That means men, we have to spend more time in his word. Prioritizing more time for the word. Maybe there are some days uh, when the TV needs to stay off. Uh, We don't need to turn on the ball game uh, that day, uh, but we need to spend more time uh, in the word, uh, being familiar with the sound of his voice. Well, we also have to be familiar with the skill 
of using his weapons. <laughs> Understand, brothers and sisters, we're, you're in a battle. When you're in a war, weapons are used. And in this spiritual battle, this spiritual war, where we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the rulers of darkness, we've got to know how to use our spiritual weaponry, the armor of God. We have to know how to put on the girdle of truth uh, and the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, we have to have our feet shod uh, with the preparation uh, of the gospel of peace. Uh, we have to know how to use uh, the shield of faith uh, and the helmet of salvation. Uh, and we have to rightly uh, be able to use uh, the sword of the spirit, uh, which is the word of God. Uh, we have to be familiar with his weapons but then we have to be familiar with the strategy of our enemy <laughs> every good soldier a man on fire who's prepared for battle has done his homework and he knows that the enemy has certain tendencies Listen, uh, like this enemy we're dealing with, uh, that we're fighting against, uh, we know uh, some uh, of his tendencies. Uh, you see, he's a deceiver and the liar. He's very active uh, because he's out like a roaring lion, uh, seeking whom he may devour. Uh, he's a tempter. He's full of anger and hatred. Uh, he's an accuser. He's a thief and a murderer but he's also already been defeated that's why he's come down with great wrath because he already knows that he's only got a short time because the good soldier the man on fire knows that he's already victorious because greater is he that is in us uh, than he that is in the world. Uh, then lastly, the good soldier, the man on fire, is familiar with the shadows of his friends. Uh, the military has a motto uh, that no one gets left behind. Uh, and soldiers uh, are often willing uh, to sacrifice their lives uh, in order to bring home uh, one of their fallen comrades. They would rather lose their life uh, than leave a fallen comrade or friend behind. That's because the good soldier, the man on fire, not only cares about his own welfare, but he also looks out for the welfare of his fellow soldiers. I believe this is what Paul is talking about uh, when he says in Galatians, uh, we ought to bear one another's burdens. Uh, but in order for me to bear my brothers, uh, my comrades' burdens, uh, I have to first know them. Uh, in other words, uh, we have have to be familiar with one another as men as good soldiers uh, we have to be there for one another uh, especially as black men uh, in light of the times uh, that we are living in uh, where we face the threats of mass incarceration uh, racism police brutality uh, all across this country uh, all the more uh, we need to be there from one another uh, instead of killing and harming each other ourselves We're talking about the cold but then fourthly brothers and sisters got to be men who are fighters who are what men who are determined men who are driven and men who are dedicated. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. The good soldier knows. The good soldier, the man on fire, is determined. He's fought a good fight. In other words, he does not retreat from a fight. 
the good soldier does not retreat in the face of the enemy, but he's a man who stands up and stands his ground and fights until the battle is over. He fights for his family. He fights for his children. He fights for his church. He fights for his community. He fights for the oppressed. He fights for the poor. He fights for justice. He fights for peace. He fights for lost souls. He fights for the salvation of men and women. But the man on fire, he's also driven. He knows how to finish this course. Understand today, but many Christians uh, are a, only about one disaster and one service away from throwing in the towel and quitting on the Lord. And truth of the matter is some of us men may have come here this morning feeling this way where we're on the verge of checking out. But the good soldier, the man on fire, who's equipped and ready for battle, doesn't give in, doesn't throw in the towel, but he's driven to finish. No matter the uncertain time frame, no matter the uncertain obstacles, no matter the uncertain challenges, the man on fire is still driven to finish all because one thing is certain and that is in spite of it all, God is in control. And just let me throw this in here. We can't quit, men. But we've got to stay driven to finish the course because it's in our blood. Who it's who we are. The reason we're alive today is because our ancestors through hundreds of years of slavery and bondage, sun up to sundown, all day every day, working but yet they never quit they never gave up they never gave in and that's why we're here today. But thirdly, the good soldier the man on fire is also dedicated. He knows how to keep the faith. We're talking about men who are determined to live for the Lord regardless of the personal cost. In other words, for these men, their relationship with God is not circumstantial. It's not based upon how things are going. It's not based upon their current mood or how they feel that day or if things went their way that day. No, the good soldier keeps the faith no matter what. These men are like Job. They lost all they have, but afterward can still testify, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. These men are like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the face of death uh, by a fiery furnace uh, yet they declared even uh, if, it, if the Lord does not deliver us uh, we still won't bow down uh, these men are like Caleb uh, old and gray uh, but cry out uh, give me this mountain uh, for I am more than able to conquer it but then lastly talking about the code they are men who are finishers who are what brothers and sisters oftentimes when we think of finishers we think of a Mariano Rivera coming in to pitch the ninth inning and helping the Yankees win another World Series we think of a Michael Jordan, a Kobe Bryant, LeBron James making the game-winning shot over Steph Curry, making the game-winning shot as the buzzer sounds to secure a come-from-behind victory. When we think of finishers, we think of the odds stacked against us, but yet with all of the odds stacked against us, yet we still squeak out a victory in the end. That's a finisher, or is it? Because that's not what we find in our text. Tech, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. There is no squeaking out of victory in the end. There is no grand scheme or an elaborate getaway. 
There is no miracle on its way. No Paul, after all of the great things he's done for the growth and building of the kingdom, yet now he is in prison and is about to be put to death. That doesn't sound so glamorous. That doesn't sound like what a victorious finisher looks like. But understand today, men, that God doesn't measure finishers in the same way we do. In God's eyes, a finisher is one who endures to the end, no matter what. In this life, that end may be. Understanding this, this is why Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. In God's army, God's good soldiers, men on fire, who are finishers, understand the fact that sometimes in order to finish, in order to endure till the end, it calls for sacrifice. And that sacrifice is not always glorious or beautiful because that sacrifice sometimes in a war will mean that we will have to lay down our life for what we believe as with Paul here facing death. But men, the reason Paul was able to be this strong and handle this is because he had resolve. He was a good soldier and a good soldier is in it for the long haul. He's not wishy-washy, but he's committed to the end. But Paul was also able to do it because he had a reason. The good soldier, the man on fire knows the price that was paid for him by his superior. Therefore, he loves the Lord, and no price is too high for the good soldier to pay. And lastly, Paul was able to do it because he had his reward. The finisher knows that there is a reward in the end to the one who endures. They know that this reward is not instantaneous, as in this earthly realm, when you make a game-winning shot and you're instantly rewarded. But there's going to come a day, brothers and sisters, when as Paul says, the righteous judge, who is Jesus, shall give me a crown of righteousness. And the good news is, is that it's not just for me or you only, but for all those who love his appearing. To all the men, the good soldiers, the men on fire, who, don't, who didn't allow circumstances, challenges, obstacles, or setbacks, throw them away, but they stayed faithful till the end, even unto death. And I'm through, but listen, men, we're in a war. And I wish I could stand here today and say it's going to get better. Things are going to get a whole lot easier. But that's not what war is all about. We're in a spiritual battle. But I'm just wondering uh, if here at CWC, uh, if we've got some men, uh, some good soldiers, uh, some men on fire who will keep fighting the good fight, uh, who will finish their course, uh, who will keep the faith uh, and endure till the end. We used to sing the song, uh, I'm on the battlefield uh, for my Lord. And I promised him that I, that I will serve him till I die because I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And in these last days, uh, if we're going to be equipped and ready for battle as men, that's the mentality that we have to have, uh, that we're willing to serve him on the battlefield uh, until we die. And I don't know about you, uh, but I'm so glad uh, to do it because Jesus Christ was willing to do it for me. He came down to this battlefield called earth and he served here until he died for your sins and for mine. But death could not hold him because Jesus is a man who is a finisher. That's why early Sunday morning, he got up, I said he got up, 
with all power in his hands power over demons power over drugs power over depression power over alcohol power over pornography power over suicidal thoughts power over addiction power over adultery power over fornication power over hate power over brokenness power over sickness he got up with all power in the palm of his hands the songwriter says there's power power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb do i have a witness is there anybody here today who's glad for his power is there anybody right now do i have a witness i wish i had just one witness can i get one who's glad for what is done i need a witness can i get two who knows he always comes through i need a witness can i get three who's got the victory i need some more witnesses can i get four who knows he can open doors i need some more witnesses can i get five who's glad he's alive i need a few more witnesses can i get six who knows he can fix i need a few more witnesses can i get seven who's on your way to heaven i think i can get a few more witnesses can i get eight who knows he's never late i need a few more witnesses can i get nine who knows he's divine i think i need just a few more can i get ten who knows he's coming back again if god's been good to you if you know he's the way the truth and the life you ought to praise him in this place hallelujah you know who i'm talking about he's the first and the last he's the beginning and the end he's the keeper of creation and the creator of all he's the architect of the universe and the manager of all time he always was always is and always will be he's unmoved he's unchanged he's unparalleled he's unprecedented he's undefeated and he's never undone he was bruised yet he brings healing he was pierced yet he eases pain he was persecuted yet he brings freedom he was dead yet he gives life he's my redeemer he's my savior he's my god and he's my priest he's my joy and he's my comfort he's my law and he rules my life there's nobody like him he supplies strength for the weak he's available for the tempted he sympathizes and he saves he strengthens and he sustains he guards and he guides he heals the sick he cleanses lepers he forgives sinners he discharges debtors he delivers captives he defends the feeble he blesses the young and he serves the unfortunate he regards the aged he rewards the dead 
diligent and he beautifies the meek ain't he all right i said ain't he all right ain't he all right i know he's all right We need some men. Who are on fire. Ladies, I didn't forget about you. We need some women. Who are on fire. And just like the army has a code, we have a code. We gotta be men who are followers. Men who are faithful. Men who are familiar. Men who are fighters and men who are finishers. Let me appeal to my men. Men, it's all right to be broken, it's all right to hurt. It's all right to acknowledge that you're in pain. That you need help. Even our Lord and Savior, knowing he's winning the victory for us, had a moment on the cross when he cried out. My God, my God, why have you, why have you left me all alone? But even before the cross, even in the garden of Gethsemane, When the weight of this world, the sins of this world, when it was becoming overbearing. He acknowledged, God, I ain't giving up. But if there is another way, I wish you could take this away from me. I wish I didn't have to go through this. How many of us have asked that God, why did I have to go through this? And so uh, the greatest example we have had his moments. But the only difference is that in his moments, he wasn't afraid to acknowledge what he was dealing with. And how many of us as men have been holding on to stuff? Because we don't want someone else to see us hurting. Or see us in pain. See what we're dealing with. But brothers, today, our Father wants to bring healing, deliverance into your life. Peace. 
he wants to heal you, soldier. Some of our fires spiritually aren't burning like they used to simply because we need healing. God wants to relight your fire today. So we're not asking what it is. But I just wonder if we got some men who are bold enough to step out by faith and come join me. And say, God, I need my healing today. Brothers and sisters, you've heard me talk about not knowing my father. Just meeting my father's family, finding out who they were two years ago. And in the process, finding out that my father died when I was six. Never knew all of the any of the real backstory of why he wasn't there, what happened, all of that. And as a result, I had a lot of pain inside of me. Are you hearing me? I had a lot of pain and hurt inside of me, but I didn't know how to cry. As a matter of fact, I thought I needed to be tough. That I wasn't supposed to cry. Are you hearing me? But that emotion is going to come out one way or the other. So you know what mine did? It turned into anger. And so I was filled with a lot of anger. Until one day, freshman, sophomore in college, I'll never forget, I was preaching one Sabbath at my home church, and I just got filled up. I just started crying in the pulpit. But then I could not stop crying. Felt like years of pain coming through my tears. The whole church started crying. Half of them was my family anyway. <laughs> crying. Well, you know what? When it finally was over, I felt like a weight that I've been carrying for years lifted off of me. Anger that would sometimes flare up was gone. All because I let it out. I'm not saying you got to come up here and start crying. But what I am saying it's just like God did for me. He can heal your pain. He can bring healing into your life. And so any man here today, any soldier, I wonder do I have someone bold enough to just step out on faith, come join me and be a part of this prayer. Simply saying, God, I've been carrying this for too long. I need healing and I'm claiming it in my life today. This is for my men right now. Men, if you're here, doesn't matter how young or old you are, I invite you to join me now. Amen. Amen. Any other men want to join us?
Come on, man. Let's stand. Let's come closer, man. Let's be close. We don't want to. We all we in this army together. I don't want you to stand so far apart. Amen. God's gonna bring healing. Relight the fire. Somebody else say amen. 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 I, I want to extend this I know we've been really focusing on men but I know we have some ladies here who need healing as well and as we pray for our men I don't want you to miss the opportunity as well so if there are any women who want to come and be a part of this prayer asking God for your healing for God restoring the joy in your life Take the pain away. I invite you to come and join us. Men, if we could just come a little, get a little closer. For any of our sisters that want to. How many you know God is able to bring healing in this place today? Those who remain in your seats as I get ready to pray, I want you to stretch your hands toward all these lovely people all your brothers and sisters matter of fact if you have a loved one up here I want you to stretch your hands in their direction but I want everyone to stretch their hands forward as we touch and agree in this prayer let's pray Before I pray, we want to give someone the opportunity. If there's one here today, maybe there's someone, the Holy Spirit has touched you. You're declaring that I want to be a good soldier. I want to be a man or woman on fire for God. It starts by being a follower. First, we have to be men, women who are followers. You've never given your life to Jesus Christ. You're here. You want to say yes to him today. You say, I want to give my life to him. I want to be baptized be here we want to acknowledge you before we pray at this time if there's one just raise that hand nice and high so we can make sure you fill out a card for us whoever you could be if you're up front or you're here just raise it if you're at your seat so we can acknowledge you is there one if you're online there's a link in the chat you can fill out or you can see me at the conclusion of service or one of the elders and let us know and we'll have you fill out a card. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for speaking to our hearts today. We thank you, God, for giving these men the courage to acknowledge the fact that they've dealt with pain, they've experienced pain, hurt, Maybe no one else knows about it, but they're tired of having to try to be tough and strong as if nothing is wrong. And so, God, as these men, some young, some old, from different walks in life, have come today, God, we claim healing over each and every one of their lives. Father, I claim even healing over my own life. I pray, God, that 
even now, God, if there are tears that need to come out, God, that you would help a man here, God, who doesn't know how to cry to let it out. If there's a relationship that needs to be restored, I'm praying, God, that as you bring healing, God, that it will help even to restore broken relationships. I'm praying, God, that you would take the pain, the hurt, the hate, the guilt. Take it away. God, I pray even now that you would renew some man's confidence that, that his salvation is sure, that, that he's no longer bound by the guilt of his past mistakes. But he's been delivered and set free in Jesus. I pray, God, that every man now, God, knows that they are a man on fire, that they are a soldier in your arm. I'm praying, God, now that chains are broken, that strongholds are broken, that addictions are broken. I'm praying, God, that no man here, God, in the midst of their hurt or pain will ever run to the bottle or to some drug or some promiscuity or adultery. But I'm praying, God, that you will heal marriages, that you'll heal relationships with children. To restore relationships with brothers and sisters. Brother to brother. I pray God as well that you extend everything to our women who have come down, God. We pray and ask for covering and healing in their life. From the hurt and the pain. From the lies that have been spoken. From the abusive relationship. From the failed marriage. And, and whatever it is. from the sexual abuse as a child. We pray for healing and victory right now in the name of Jesus. The fires that have been going out because of the hurt and pain we've been dealing with, God, relight the fire today. The youngest to the oldest, and as we stretch our hands to ease loved ones, we claim our victory, our healing. So that as we go back to our seats, God, it's, it's not just men on fire, but women on fire for you as well. Hallelujah. We claim this victory now in Jesus' name that every lover of the risen Christ say amen. Amen. And amen. Somebody say amen if you've been blessed today. Amen. Just very quickly, I want to remind everyone that we have a special meal prepared for everyone down Sarah's in particularly, especially for our men. And we want you know, to know, men, that the ladies have asked when you come downstairs and enter to the fellowship area, they want to escort you to your seat. Amen. And then lastly, let's remember our rally at 6. For all those who are willing to be a part of our parade of churches representing community worship center, I want you to meet with me at the, immediately at the conclusion of service right down here at the front. God bless. We praise God for the servant of God, man on fire, Pastor Ridley. Amen. Amen. Our benedictory hymn is hymn number 618, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Please stand. 618.
stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey, for to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. He Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in His strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you, ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel. to prayer where duty calls or danger be never wanting From God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.